Welcome to Cutie Clinic. Cutie Clinic is brought to you by Room Now Live. We think you should spend your time at meetings that matter, meetings that challenge you, meetings that interact with you. RoomNow.live is such a meeting. The title of today's QD Clinic is a common line that I often think but never say because it's the snarky side of me, but boy, it comes out a lot when I ask simple questions. I get an unexpected response, and my line, the title of today's clinic is, What were you thinking? My God, really? What were you thinking? And it seems to happen a lot. There's some behaviors in patient care that defy explanation. Let me give you three of them. Here's a good one. New consult for, get this, joint pain. Who better to see than a rheumatologist? Let's go over the uh, facts here. You've had this how long? It's affecting you where? What are you taking for it? Nothing. What? What did you say your pain was on a scale of 0 to 10? 5, 6, 7, 9? And you're taking what? Nothing. Can you explain that to me? Another one that seems to go along is, I'm doing good, but my pain is a 10. All right, so let's take these apart. The first one is, they're having a lot of pain. They're willing to drive an hour to see you, the specialist. They're willing to spend $400 cash to pay for the best advice money can buy to get into why their ankle, their toe, their back, their head, whatever is hurting, and yet they haven't tried an over-the-counter medicine. They haven't taken a prescription medicine from the other three doctors they saw before you. This is a red flag. Someone who comes to you with a lot of pain and is either unwilling or oblivious to the option of trying a medicine. Of course, the most common response is, I don't like taking medicines. And I'm thinking, really? Okay. So, the plan in today's visit, let me just write it in here. Prayer, um, rabbit's feet, um, biofeedback. Am I allowed to use a prescription or no? What were you thinking? Let's go to my next pet peeve. Um, they're taking... Um, a biologic, you gave them a biologic, and the follow-up visit's gonna be at six weeks, eight weeks, two months, three months, whatever. And they come back and you say, so how's that um, abatacept working for you? Oh, I stopped it. Oh, what happened? Well, the prescription ran out. No, I, I gave you, you know, a month's supply and three refills. Well, when, when the month was up, I stopped taking the medicine because I, I assume that's what you wanted me to do. No, that's why I gave you three refills. I kind of explained that we're going to take this medicine until I see you and then we're going to assess how that worked out. Well, no, they will have stopped it after four weeks because, again, they were either obtuse or they saw a television ad that made them worry and thinking that they probably should be stopping it. Or either their neighbor said something or their PCP surgeon, God knows whoever, whoever else knows nothing about biologics other than what they learned from television, was saying, oh, really, you're taking what? Oh my goodness, that's, um, um, that's one on television, right? So they stop medicine. They stop it without calling you and they expect on the follow-up visit that you're just going to resume the plan, even though they aborted the plan. So, in both these instances, I mean, there's a lot of education that needs to go on. I didn't spend enough time telling that patient, you need to take this every day. You need to take this once a week. You need to take this until I see you in three months. Then we're going to assess. If you have any questions, you call me. Nobody stops this medicine but me because nobody knows this medicine but me. I'm the guy who prescribed it. Not your primary care, not your neighbor, the surgeon, not your hairdresser who mother was taking that medicine and, and passed away suddenly, again, you got to call me if you have a concern because I'm going to be the one who knows. you got to educate patients on, on, on the scenarios that are going to get in the way of effective empiric trials, effective patient care. One more, what were you thinking was the no-show patient who when you ask your staff, 
why didn't Mr. Foster come in? Um, he called, um, or be even better, they didn't call, and you call we called, and we said, what happened? And he said, oh, too sick, couldn't come in. Too sick to go to the doctor's office, who might be able to then actually do something about the problem, as opposed to you staying home and, and watching Maury Povich look at the results of a genetic test. Again, makes no sense. Um, patients who are too sick to come in um, might be too sick in the future to come in multiple times. Um, I think that, again, telling the patient, um, come to see us when you're sick, is something important. I think that actually nipping in the bud, when I find out about it, I'll call the patient and say, oh, I heard you were really sick. You know, if you, you should have come in, but what can I do to fix your problem today over the phone? Because I missed your appointment, and now we can do this phone, uh, this televisit um, by video or telephone even. Although I don't like, as you know, if you're at my recent blog, I don't like telephone visits. Um, but you nip in the bud by calling the patient at, on the spot, or when they come back, explain to them, I'm sorry you couldn't come in, um, but the problem with that is uh, this is not me doing benevolent work. This is unfortunately a business, and no-shows really are hurting my business. And if you can't come, give us some fair warning so we can fill your slot with the many, you know, hundreds of people who are looking to get in to see us uh, sooner rather than later. So again, too sick to come in is another one of those. Oh, my goodness. Don't be too sick. Come to Room Now Live. Tune in tomorrow.